everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Connect Up, your companion study to come follow me. Hi you guys. Welcome to today's lesson. You guys just missed the blooper before this. It was a good one. Maybe we'll share it. Maybe at the end. We are doing a marvelous work in a wonder, 2nd Nephi 26 through uh, 30, and we are into March, the middle of March. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. We love you and we're so grateful for you. There are so many people that have reached out to us with so much kindness. We appreciate that. But we especially appreciate We got Julie. the best message from Scotland. Julie Rennie and her mom sent us the most beautiful, funny message and they sang to us. Little backstory. Can I tell a little backstory? Yeah, absolutely. This after was the, so, so after fun. After the high five fist bump. Let's do that. Okay. All the way to Scotland because I I loved your message. I sat there and Chelsea showed it to me and I was like, I gotta watch it again. I gotta watch it again. And I may have had like some it was just so special. So fist bumps. So boom boom bam bam. <laughs> Hearts. We Two of you. you. Thank we you love so you so much. We do. So we sang um, as a family in church. The miracle. We were the backup singers. Our, our little kids mostly sang the song. And it was so special. And it was such a spiritual experience as a family. And we, I enjoyed them on Sunday singing it together and just practicing because it just brought the spirit. It's such a powerful song. And so I posted it on Facebook. I recorded it from the YouTube stream and posted it on Facebook. I didn't know you weren't allowed to do that. So I got in a little bit of trouble and I got asked to take it down. So that's why it's not there anymore. But. I enjoyed sharing it for the one day that I didn't know from just being naive, okay? And so we were able to share that video with a lot of you, and so I was glad, but they had sent this video back that they had loved it so much, and they loved listening to the kids sing. Our kids sing, we have sweet little voices, and it was really fun. So that was just a wonderful video. Thank you so much. So thank you for sending that to us. Everyone, grab your scriptures, your journals, and your scripture markers. It's time for us to connect up. I think we need to like get two high fives for getting through Isaiah. Hey! <laughs> hey, Isaiah. Hey, but now we get into like the Avengers part. Did you know that? Okay. No. Marvel. Marvelous. Marvel. Marvelous. Mm -hmm. Marvelous. Marvelous. <laughs> Today is good. We get to the end of 2nd Nephi and we get into some really juicy stuff. And it's good. Can I just say one more thing? Nope. We gotta keep going. High five live tour. That we're going ah! You guys. Okay, how much longer, like how long can this video be? Just fast forward this if you don't care. Just fast forward. Hey, Chelsea, just a reminder, <laughs> Chelsea and I are doing a tour for High Five Live with High Five Live Tours. And this is for like grade 12 seniors, not senior citizens. So, okay, yeah. that might happen later. And there were some people that wanted us. They're like, we thought you meant others. <laughs> okay, later on, we can, we can manage that. But this is for grade 12s going into grade 12, or graduating seniors. We're just so grateful. We get to fly into New York City. We get to travel all the church history sites. We get to have fun. We get a party on the bus. They'll be dancing and singing and swimming in church history and crying and screaming of scripture. It's gonna be incredible. <laughs> so we're joining with High Five Live Tours. We can put a link below. If you know that your youth needs this and it will very, very much help them, please bring them, send them. And if you think that it might be, you know, okay to hang out with Steve Scott for 10 days, <laughs> Might be a little crazy. Also, grandparents, parents, people that have like extra resources, can you consider donating and helping a youth come to this, this event? This is a cool part it is. because they do a scholarship program, and there are kids who have applied to come to travel, but they can't afford it. And so, High Five Live has scholarship options for for kids who want to be able to attend, but just can't do it. Consider that. That might be something that you can do to help. And then come on our same senior, the real seniors, the senior, our senior friends. We'll do another tour with you later. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, now we're back. Now, after these messages, <laughs> welcome back. We are jumping into the end of the goodness of Second Nephi. And at the end of Second Nephi, one of the greatest scriptures talks about a marvelous work that will proceed in the last days. Let's read it first before we, let's go to 2 Nephi 27, 26. Okay, All right? I got it. Open thine scriptures. 27, 26. Okay. Therefore, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, yea, a marvelous work and a wonder, 
for the wisdom of their wise and learned shall perish, and the understanding and their, of the, their prudence shall be hid. But I always think about like when I was at BYU Hawaii, and I was a uh, worked in the cafeteria, and every Sunday we had to still serve the students' food. So I had to work on Sundays, but we had like sack lunches and stuff. And um, they would sing. There, they, there's a song that would sing this. A marvelous work and a wonder. A marvelous work is about to come no, forth among the children of men. But that's a good one too. That's a good one. But it's such a beautiful phrase because it truly is a marvelous work and a wonder. So let's break down the word marvelous to the word marvel. And what does it mean to marvel, not the comic strip, and not <laughs> the superheroes? Or I would be Captain Canada. But it, I can't be Captain America. Because okay, I'm not American. Okay, well, what does it mean to marvel? To marvel to me means to look in awe. Like, have you ever marveled at something? Our son, our missionary who is in California, and the Hmong-speaking missionary, called us this morning. And he said, can you see the picture I'm sending you right now? He's standing at the canyon of Yosemite National Park. And it, we marveled. Wow! Whoa! That is so cool. And we also marveled at his growth, didn't we? Yeah, that's one of those... Wow! Wow! Like there was like the, all these wows. Like he was, he his his countenance was radiant. He was smiling, even though he's been struggling and having like hard challenges throughout his mission. But his personal spiritual development and growth is a marvel. We kind of sounded like dude crush off Nemo. I was like, whoa! And then I was like, whoa! And then I was like, whoa! <laughs> um, and I marveled. There's one night that we got we were woken up as a family early. A carbon monoxide alarm went off. And our children ran up and they're like, Dad, was like there's an alarm going off. Now, we have um, Airbnb rentals that we have, cabins that we rent out. And so I said, pack it up. I don't know what's going on, but the alarm went off. Let's go up to the cabin tonight. And that's, it's only just a half mile away from us. And so we, we jumped in and it was early in the morning. And there was like this comet that was actually at the one time. I can't remember. This was a while ago. And it was across the sky. And we all sat there and we were like, Whoa. Like the stars, I've never seen them at 2 or 3 a.m. like that, and I was, I, I'm not usually up then. Chelsea's, <laughs> I might be up that time. Chelsea's usually gone to bed with the chickens at 9 p.m. <laughs> but I'm up early. <laughs> and she's awake with the chickens at 4 a.m. <laughs> no, not that early. But we did. We, we stared at the sky and we're like, oh, wow, yeah, so that marvelous so, marveling. When we talk about a marvelous work, this will be the marvelous work that's like, wow. 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 Okay. That will help you understand, because when you look back at it, you go, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> okay. But I don't think they can put that in the scriptures. And it shall come to pass in the last days that, wow, shall proceed forth. Like, that just doesn't translate correctly. No. Not, so we use the word marvelous. <laughs> okay. So what, we've talk, what we're going to talk about today is we can talk about all kinds of things, but we, we kind of broke it into two categories. There's the marvelous work or that happens in the church of Jesus Christ. In the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's these moments that we're like, wow. And then there is a marvelous work that happens in me and you and all of us individually. As we choose Christ and we can keep covenants, like there's a wow factor. So we're talking about the wow factor? That's the word of the week. The wow factor. Okay? We're going to talk... The marvelous work and a wonder that happens in the church of Jesus Christ and in me. That's, and you, and everyone else. This is the wow factor. Have you ever had seen someone um, accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, totally change, their countenance change, everything change, and afterwards you sit and you go, wow. Can I just share a story about a friend who I'm like, wow. So she was, she's from Quebec. And she was not raised in the gospel. Her both of her parents were alcoholics. It was just her and her brother. And her brother met the missionaries. And they're very spiritual, like they are connected, they're very sensitive, I guess is the way to describe it. And so when the missionaries met her her brother, um, and he came home and they were sharing the gospel with him, she said all she remembers is that he just had this light in his eyes, like in and, and he had the this lightness countenance, this this and she was like she could just sense it, feel it, and knew it was in him. So she was open to it, but what she shared was when she went into um, went, uh, to be baptized, when she joined the, the church, um, she went in the water and she physically felt um, like these chains. Hmm. Were, she said as she came out of the water, it just felt like these, all these chains, like this heaviness just 
fell into the water and it was so drastic of a feeling. But moving forward, she's now the mother of eight children. She homeschooled all eight of her kids. They are all extremely musical. They all play like the violin. They all sing. They're, they are just the most powerful spiritual family. They've traveled the world. Um, their last name is Morphus. Um, they've traveled the world doing mission missions as a family and all they've done, gone like they went to the Philippines and they um, just sang and bore testimony of the Savior in all these chapels and they just travel around and they've done that a few times. But the transformation of how far she's come in her life is wow. So wow. Think about that for a second. Now let's look at the church as a whole. Let's go whole. The big wow. Okay. Well, even like the pioneers. Could you imagine what they think from where they started with the Would church? Would that be pile wow? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so what do you say? Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. The church of Jesus. Let's talk about the biggest wow factor, which is the Book of Mormon. This is the part that will have the greatest amount of adversity, but it will also have the greatest amount of blessings. And impact. And impact in lives. This is the part of a marvelous work. You think about what the Lord um, orchestrated in order for the Book of Mormon to come forth. So let's talk about a few things. Second Nephi, chapter 29, verses 1, 2, through 7. Okay. Why the Book of Mormon? Why not just the Bible? Right? Yes. Okay, let's go you there. You want to go? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. But behold, there shall be many at that day when I shall proceed to do a marvelous work among them, that I may wow. remember my covenants, which I have made unto the children of men, that I may set my hand again the second time to recover my people, which are the house of Israel. And also that I may remember the promises which I have made unto thee, Nephi, and also unto thy father, that I would remember your seed, and that the words of your seed should go forth, out of the mouth into the, your seed, and my word shall hiss forth unto the ends of the earth for a standard unto my people, can which I just, are of the house of Israel. Can I just say on the word hiss, if you could kind of underline it and put out in the margin, just put whisper? Okay? Because in the, in the translation of the word hiss, I think, like, in that day it could be, like, whisper would be appropriate in the English language to use. Like, okay. that it would whisper forth to the ends of the earth. Okay. Okay? And many, and because of my words shall whisper forth, many of the Gentiles shall say, a Bible, a Bible, um, I've got a Bible, and there cannot be any more Bible. But thus saith the Lord God, O fools, thou shalt, they shall have a Bible, and it shall proceed forth from the Jews, my ancient covenant people, and what thank the, they, the Jews, for the Bible, which they receive from them, yea, what do the Gentiles mean? Do they remember the travails and the labors and the pains of the Jews and their deliverance unto me in diligence. bringing diligence unto me in bringing forth the salvation unto the Gentiles? In other words, like the people who say we have a Bible, we have a Bible. Do you truly, really understand the covenants and the blessings from the Bible, or are you just saying it? Okay. Yeah. So five. O oh, ye Gentiles, have you remembered the covenants, mine ancient covenant people? No. No, but ye have cursed them and hated them, and have not sought to recover them. But behold, I will return all these things upon your own heads. For I, the Lord, have not forgotten my people. Thou fool, thou shalt say a Bible. We have got a Bible, and we need no more Bible. Have you obtained a Bible, say it were by the Jews? Know you not that there are more nations than one? Know ye not that I, the Lord your God, have created all men, and that I remember those who are upon the isles of the sea, and that I rule in the heavens above and the earth below, beneath, and I bring forth my word unto the children of men, yea, even upon all the nations of the earth. And so and he, he goes on to talk about he will have his people um, sh write down the words that he's sharing with each nation, he's not only going to be talking to the Jews, he's going to talk, be talking to all of his children and trying to communicate with them and have them turn to him. It's not going to just be only in the Bible, there's going to be other nations that need the Lord. The marvelous work is that God continues to speak through prophets on the earth today, and that the Book of Mormon stands as another witness of the divinity and covenants from Jesus Christ. That's the power of this book. Now, if we moved it over, that that power will move in us. We'll, we'll talk about that, but is it truly working in you, the power of this book? Mm -hmm. okay? 
Let's go, let's go to 28. Let's go back a little bit. 28, verse 2, and then we'll go to 29. I'm not there. You want to go? And the things which shall be written out of the book shall be of great worth unto the children of men, and especially unto our seed, which is the remnant of the house of Israel. Now to 30. 30. For behold, thus saith the Lord God, I will give unto the children of men, <clears throat> line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, and there a little. And blessed are those who hearken unto my precepts, and lend an ear unto my counsel, for they shall learn wisdom. For unto him that receiveth I will give more. And from them that shall say, We have enough. From them shall they take away even that which they have. Which they have. Meaning this. Do you truly read and understand the scriptures and the standard works? The blessings of the Book of Mormon. Oftentimes I'll hear people say, I really wish I knew what was in the other part. Like, Do you read this one? <laughs> this is the one. Do you read your scriptures? Most oftentimes people that I work with... Um, I'll have these questions like, when I do personal coaching with them, and I'll ask them questions about how's your physical health and how are you taking care of your spirituality. And really, nine times out of ten, nine point nine percent times out of ten, their spirituality is struggling. And the Book of Mormon isn't just a book, right? It is a marvelous work and a wonder. What do you got? What just tweaked in your brain? Oh, you're gonna give me a second so okay. I can find it. I uh. I just think about the blessings that have come to me from the from reading of the Book of Mormon, and when we look at the overall, the Church of Jesus Christ, could you take the Book of Mormon and take it away from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and still have the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? The answer? No. Not at all. What are you looking for? I'm trying to find this quote. Oh. There's a quote that my friend Sarah posted, and it was so powerful. It was a quote from one of the prophets, the promises of reading the Book of Mormon. If you read, there it is. Okay. Is this from Elder? This is Ezra Taft Benson quote. No, Marion G. Romney. Okay. If in our homes parents will read from the Book of Mormon prayerfully and regularly, both by themselves and with their children, the spirit of that great book will come to permeate, permeate their homes, and all who dwell therein. The spirit of reverence will increase. Mutual respect for each other will grow. The spirit of contention will depart. Parents will counsel with their children in greater love and wisdom. Children will be more responsive and submissive to the counsel of their parents. Righteousness will increase. Faith, hope, and charity, the pure love of Christ, will abound in our homes and lives, bringing in their wake peace, joy, and happiness. That is an Ezra Taft Benson quote. It's misquoted. Oh, really? That is Ezra Taft Benson. So this... So my friend Sarah said she remembers reading this at a time in her life when things in her family often felt contentious and she was struggling with a couple of her kids. I put it to a test and it 100% worked. There was absolutely more peace, love, joy, and happiness in her home. It is an inspired book that has changed my life forever. I'm so thankful to have found out for myself that it is true. And that's the marvelous work. This is the marvelous work. But you have to put it to practice for yourself. It's like planting that seed and nourishing that seed. And like, is this seed a good seed? Let's try it out, let's see if it actually is. And, and watch this marvelous and miraculous work unfold in you from reading that Book of Mormon. I saw, I saw a comment made by a guy on social media that said that he had stolen a Book of Mormon from the Marriott Hotel. <laughs> oh. And then read it. <laughs> oh. And he was not a member of our faith at the time. <laughs> and he read it, and it he was converted. Wow. <laughs> and I think this, I think oftentimes we look at that there should be specific spots when it, we talk about the miracle that works on us, that, we've, that we think it should be like, really the conversion or the marvelous work happens as we sit down, and, you know, the lights are perfect, and we got music, and nice smell, and mom's baking, and everything's just perfect in the house, and we're reading our scriptures, and, just feeling the spirit, and then your little brother comes and kicks you in the shins, and you're and it all breaks loose. Like, it, show that experience you had from Relief Society about the girl who was teaching Relief Society. Okay, well, I want to share this first, and then I will. Um, okay. The, there is a process that has that happens as you're reading the Book of Mormon. It's not like, oh, like you've now been changed in like a week or Sometimes so. Sometimes it might. Well, it might. It might. It, it might be a drastic experience, but I believe that change is a consistent, continual basis. Line upon line. Yes, and it says the scripture, um, oh, oh, where am I right now? 
Twenty-eight thirty. That's okay. when we just read. Yeah, because I will give unto the children men of men line upon line, precept upon precept. So like, that those steps are really important. So there's a lady in Ridley Society that was teaching, and it was so inspirational. Um, she was sharing that she had this really huge challenge come up in her life. She was diagnosed with cancer, brain cancer, that was like the size that was larger than an egg. She's a mother of three. Her youngest is seven months. And she's a convert to the church, and she's gone through this process, and she shared it a few times, bearing her testimony, and it's very inspiring. But she said that while she was, um, when she found out this diagnosis, she was like, I wasn't doing the things that I knew I was supposed to be doing. Um, but what happened was when she found out about her diagnosis, she had the most amazing spiritual experience with the Lord and he poured so much peace on her and her husband. And she just felt this radiant love, like it just soaked into her soul, this love. And she was like, man, I'm, I'm not doing all the things, but I feel, still feel so um, sustained in this challenge. You know, it just made me think about how much love the Lord has for us, even if we're struggling, right? Even when we're struggling, He loves us. He wants to help us. And turning to Him is the answer. And those experiences help us turn to Him. And we have these wonderful and mar marvelous experiences with the Lord that strengthen our faith and deepen our testimony. In the end of the writings of Second Nephi, Nephi also teaches us about the marvelous work that will happen amongst the covenants in the house of Israel. Okay, so it's the covenant. So if you look at chapter 29, verse 12 to 14, you're going to see that the marvelous work happens not just in the reading of, of Scripture, not in just the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, but the covenants that are found in there. And these are covenants that were made to the children of Israel. And the life-changing okay? covenants that so they are. So 12 to 14. Am I right? Chapter 29, 12 to 14? Yes. For behold, I speak unto the Jews, and they shall write it, and also speak unto the Nephites, and they shall write it. And I shall speak unto the other tribes of the house of Israel, which I have led away, and they shall write it. And I shall also speak unto all nations of the earth, and they shall write it. And it shall come to pass that the Jews shall have the words of the Nephites, and the Nephites shall have the words of the Jews, and the Nephites and the Jews shall have the words of the lost tribes of Israel, and the lost tribes of Israel shall have the words of the Nephites and the Jews. And it shall come to pass that my people, which are of the house of Israel, shall be gathered unto the, the lands of their possessions, and my words shall, shall be gathered in one. And I will show unto them that fight against my word and against my people who are of the house of Israel, that I am God. And I covenanted with Abraham that I would remember his seed forever. So those covenants are binding. The Lord is going to keep his promises. And the covenants are binding. The covenants that we make with the Lord are powerful. They bring us power, godly power in our lives. And they are sealed. Like they are stamped. Like I don't know how you like stamped. John sealed, delivered. <laughs> Let's go to chapter 30, verse 2, 5 to 6, and 8. Okay. Chapter 30, verse 2, 5 to 6, and 8. And I love this, I love this, these scriptures because they're talking about like how much the Lord is going to gather in and so much change and healing is going to occur because of this great and marvelous work and wonder. And the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be declared among them. This, these truths, this knowledge. Wherefore they shall be restored unto the knowledge of their fathers, and also to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which had was had among their fathers. And then they shall rejoice, like what joy has it brought to you, knowing these truths and having them come into your life. For they shall know that it is a blessing unto the hem from the hand of God, and their scales of darkness shall fall, begin to fall from their eyes, and many generations shall not pass away among them. Save they shall be a pure and delightsome people. Yes, these, this is they're talking about like the, these people in the Book of Mormon, these these different cultures, what's gonna happen, but it's also talking about our day and, and, and personally, like how is this affecting you personally? So last one. We got eight. Yeah. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall commence his work among among all nations, kindreds, tongue, and people, to bring about the restoration of his people upon the earth, like restoring them back to the truth. Nations. 
kindreds, what's kindreds? That'd be families, tongues, cultures, and people, individuals. And this is why missionary work is so important, you guys. Think about my two missionaries out, soon to be three. Our, our next son will be having his mission call, so we'll have three missionaries out at the same time. It's kind of crazy, but also <laughs> amazing in itself. So we talked about the High Five Live Tours <laughs> sponsorship. Uh, yeah. Just kidding. Those you know, it is almost, it's, it's actually cheaper to keep a boy on a mission than it is to feed him at home. That is the truth. Yeah, but we're, we're so grateful and just watching this marvelous transformation of our missionaries. I'm sure you've ex maybe you've been on a mission yourself, experienced for yourself or those, someone that you love. And that transformation it is just like tangible, the change that happens with missionaries. And the ability to share the gospel and speak the languages and all the things is just like, wow. I love it. It's the wow factor. So in all of this, so I'm, I'm going to forego this part about like the marvelous change in the world but I'm gonna come over to here now and talk about the marvelous change that can happen in us because the real gospel message happens individually and then families and then communities and then nations and then the world it can happen so let's go to 2613 okay <laughs> you don't have to do that when you do your your space scriptures do you, you don't have to no. you lick your finger flip, and flip, flip. Flip, flip the thing Okay. okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. I just read. You do it. Okay. And that he manifests himself unto all those who believe in him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yea, unto every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, working mighty miracles, signs, and wonders among the children of men according to their faith. On an individual, on an individual level, has the wow factor happened in you or is it see I that's a bad question I think because oftentimes people some people might think go oh, well it's not really happening in me it is hard to see progress when it's right in front of your face sometimes you got to turn back and go wow look how far I've come <laughs> right so I want you to write in the comments this question and give us an answer I would love to hear this what miracle has occurred in your life because the gospel is in it I want to know. We want to know your stories. Oh, I love that. The next part about this is the repentance that happens. And we read this one already, but we can read it again. Let's go to 26, 27. Okay. Okay. Hath he commanded any that they should not partake of his salvation? No, behold, I say unto you, nay, but he hath given it free unto all men. This is a gift that's free for everyone. And he hath commanded his people that they should persuade all men to repentance. And then it goes back to that repentance thing again, right? We have to be humble and repent, <laughs> be open, surrender. Like they're talking those scales of darkness, peeling off pride and repent. It's such a beautiful part as things change. You think about when does repentance start? Um, the moment we begin to turn. Like the moment. And that's the marvelous work. That's what happens. I just studying again that talk from General Conference. Like, have I been truly forgiven? It was going through, and I was listening to all the talks. And it's a talk about the young man who felt like, have I really been forgiven? Like, I've done all these things, and he changed his whole life, went on a mission. And his bishop's like, look at you. Like, look at the countenance that's in you right now. Um, I like the fact that I'm not the same person I was, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, or even like, two years, ten months ago. Mm -hmm. It's changing that because the marvelous work and a wonder is in progress with us. I was just thinking with Elder President Nelson when he said, if you think the restoration is complete, think again. Like it is a continually happening and it's happening in me. Yeah, and Elder Holland, I just posted this video about him speaking about forgiving and forgetting, you know? We were asked to forgive and forget. And if it comes back, forget again. And he's like, and it comes back, forget again. Like, allow the atonement uh, to, like, get rid of that. What? Gospel dementia. <laughs> Forgiveness dementia. <laughs> yeah, just forget. Right? I totally don't know what you did. But if it comes back, forget again. You know, like, sometimes Satan will work on us to bring back those memories and those thoughts. Forget again and apply that atonement and be like, that's gone. That's, that's over. I've, I've let that go. What are we even talking about? <laughs> right? Um, so when we talk about all these things, we've read 32. Let's go to, there's things that, to avoid. Like as the gospel message comes to us, and there's, there's things. Go to chapter 28. 
you know the book Art of War? You know, like, understanding how Satan's working on you. There's so many tactics, right? And so when you understand the tactics, you can avoid them. And being really clear on and having that discernment, knowing when he's working on you and getting rid of it, telling him to go you know where out of your home. life. Go home. Go home, Satan. All right, go to chapter 28, verse 7. You guys know where home is, so it kind of sounds fun. All right, go to chapter 28, verse 7 and 8. Yea, and there shall be many which shall say, Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die, and it shall be well with us. We're good. I've been saved from sin. And there shall be many which shall say, Eat, drink, and be merry. Nevertheless, fear God. He will justify in committing just a little bit of sin. Yea, lie a little, take advantage of one because of their, of their words. Dig a pit for thy neighbor. There's no harm in this. And do all these things, for tomorrow we die. And if so be that we are guilty, God will beat us with a few stripes. And at last we'll be saved in the kingdom of God. Hello. Do you understand what this is saying? Like, there will be many. It's not just going to be a few. And there's a... Um, can I give the analogy of the brownie? Which I have not given. Okay, I'll give this analogy. And I give this to my children. So this is very um, steep. Special. My kids will say this. They'll say... Uh, it was just like a little bit of bad, Dad. Like the song has just a little bit of bad, or the movie has just a little bit of bad. And I said, what if I made you a plate of brownies? And I decided to go into the baby's diaper and put a little scoop into the brownies, and I just stirred it in. We added enough sugar, you'll never taste it. Would you eat it? And they're like, ew, no. Unless you, like, you'll never know. Like, it'll just be a little bit of poo in the brownie. And they're like, Dad, no. I'm like, are you sure? Just like a little, like take a nibble. And they're like, nope, won't do it. When we justify in a little bit, just a little bit of stuff in the brownie, it does affect the outcome. It affects you. It affects your spirit. It affects your desire to continue. To, like, so consider this, like lie a little. And nevertheless, God will beat us just with the, those are lies. Recognize them for what they are. The covenants of God, when, when properly lived, will give you the greatest guidance, clarity, light, and truth. And that's the marvelous work that happens. So the greatest clarification that, I, that I've had recently with all the anti-Mormon stuff that's been coming at us, anti-Book of Mormon, anti-Prophets, anti-Temples, anti-Governments, all, all the anti-stuff that we've been, like, whatever, um, Eros. Um, what I've learned is this, is that Satan is going to try to stop this work. He's trying to stop you from feeling like you can, um, stop you from speaking. He'll even zap out your communication things. Sometimes you're like, why is this not working? I was trying to share this online and now my thing has locked me out. Like, things like that. Like, he's trying to stop the work from moving forward. He does this. Okay? But don't, don't, like, what's the word? Like, stand back? Like, stand strong. You know, stand strong, be courageous in this work. Share your testimony about the Book of Mormon. Share your knowledge of the Savior Jesus Christ. It might not be for everyone. Not everyone is ready, but there are people that are ready and they need you. And they need your voice and they need you to speak so they can hear. And I think about like the promises that we have made before we came to this earth. Be brave. Be brave and share your testimony. Live your life's mission and purpose speak the words of Christ and bring people to him and help them make and keep covenants. That is what your soul is calling you to do. That is what your soul needs. That's what's going to fill up your soul more than any bucket list, any amazing trip somewhere. You sharing the gospel and helping gather Israel is going to fill you up. So go do those things. There's a wow that happens. And if you've never experienced it, I invite you to try. Do it consistently. Um, live the gospel consistently. Um, deep dive into the scriptures, especially the Book of Mormon. And you'll find covenants and promises there that as you live, they'll change everything. We know that these things are true. And when we see this happen in our lives, we say, wow. Wow. Like, wow. Amazing. So, the word of the week this week is wowza. <laughs>
<laughs> I have to throw a little bit of a little bit of a. You're gonna have to figure out how to spell wow. Wowzers. No, nope, not wowzers. Wowza. Okay. All right. That's a good one. That is a good one. I've never had that word of the week. So ever. we love you. And we're so grateful for you, and we're so thankful that you joined us today. Have a wonderful week. We will see you next time. Love you. Bye. Hey everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Connect Up, your companion for Step It. Hi guys! <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys! Hi guys! Oh, let's try it again.